we got another topic for you guys. And this one I actually love, man. Put out by one track. I thought it used to have another letter on it. I did too, bro. I thought I was tripping. <laughs> bro, I, I, was, I wasn't going to say nothing if you didn't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you just threw us all off. It used to be like one track M or something. I don't know, whatever. All right, but Josh Wexler, man, like shout out to you. I don't know if you put your government out there, but it's already out there now. Shout out to you and the one track page. Y'all go ahead and check it out because they have a lot of dope po- uh, posts. Definitely support. But this is the advice. That he actually gave. I should have put this in the advice column. So rate this as advice <laughs> as well. <laughs> we want to know what y'all think. Why every artist should market their marketing. We're going to read what he said. All right. Marketing is an art form itself. Mm. And sometimes the creativity of one's marketing has more potential for a viral moment than the music itself. Mm. What this means <laughs> is that in those cases where your marketing efforts to promote the music stand out, to a significant degree, you should advertise those attention grabbing marketing attempts rather than the music in order to build your social profiles and repeat listeners. Mm-hmm. All right. He wrote a lot, so I'm not going to go through all this before we stop. For Baby Tron's most recent album rollout, his marketing team had an incredibly detailed 3D billboard put up in Times Square, which can be seen on the next slide. And they used footage of it to make their hype, make the hype he had in New York viral on the Internet because it was good content about a big artist. Okay. Because it was good content about a big artist, I imagine that they received free marketing from this as well because posting it could likely lead to growth for any platform. Mm-hmm. All right. Bet he's hitting on all the points. All the points are being not touched on right here. Let me see if I can go to this next slide so people can actually see what the Baby Tron post of the billboard look like. Check this out, folks. Mm. Oh, yeah, that shit was hard. I remember saying that. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, listeners, y'all come to the episode so y'all can see, you know. But, yo, marketing the marketing is the thing. It's it, it's the truth. It's what we talk about all the time. We never speci- explicitly say it in that way, but that's what we're telling people to do all the time. Even when we just talked about literally the Gucci project. Mm-hmm. We just said the narrative can go bigger than the, than the project, the yeah. songs itself, right? Marketing your marketing, as he said, is an art form itself. I am going to go ahead and say, like, this is top tier advice. I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. And not only that, if we allude to the conversation about 2 chains we had probably like six episodes ago, your marketing, if you market well, you always have great creativity and presentation and packaging in relation to your brand. That now becomes something that not only fans appreciate and experience, but other brands appreciate experience. Mm -hmm. Just like Two Chains became the head of marketing, or I forgot the actual position, but he was head of that advertisement campaign for Crystal. Right? Yeah. They say, "Oh, I appreciate this person's mind, their perspective. They can add some creative value to my campaigns or to my fashion brand." If people appreciate the packaging of how you dress, right? You always have a certain sense of style. Style. Everything you do should be marketed individually and has its own potential to blow, right? Your fashion can be a brand or a thing in of, of itself. Your uh, music is a thing in and of itself. As an artist, every bit of you is something that you should, you should be look to, looking to monetize and market as its own level of greatness. Mm-hmm. So not only does he hit the nail with the marketing aspect of it, you should market everything that you do in its own way. Of course, that becomes easier as you get bigger. But as he said, especially for a large artist, literally you just sharing that you did this, right? Become something that could move virally because pages already want to talk about it because it's something that creates conversation Mm -hmm. and creates growth for themselves. And that's the one of the like go-to tricks. I call it like a one on marketing one-on-one trick at this point to me, literally create a billboard. You only need one of them and then share it with the internet. (laughs) <laughs> people say billboards aren't valuable but billboards still have the value just because it's something in the physical world and when you share that something happened in the physical world in the digital world mm-hmm. it feels more real mm-hmm. it feels more cool so you know you can think far beyond just billboards but by like, all you need is one you can pretend like you did it in the whole city 
honestly, I've had people to do, and I did this with companies like when it, it wasn't even um like I, before I was even in music. You could just Photoshop a billboard and just say you did the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because nobody knows, man. You know what I mean? Nobody knows where it is. If anything, that creates commentary. Well, where is it? Hey, that's engagement on this post. Let them views go up. So, so no, no. I, I love this marketing, your marketing um, comment. And, I, and, you know, you're getting your love on this. The next 10 times I say it, at some point, I might forget to cite you, but know that you got it this one time right here, <laughs> Josh. So, you know what I mean? The, the 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 love has already been exchanged. What you think, Corey? Yeah, bro. I just like the the love to the the art form that is is marketing, bro. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like it doesn't get enough credit 100%. for being an art form the way it is. Like, bro, I'm stringing together this copy and this content, mm. bro. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> so, but no, I think you already hit a lot of the main points, bro. There are gonna be times where I think as an artist, you have to accept that your music might not be the most interesting focal point of the campaign. It's great when it is. It makes yeah. everybody's job so much easier when it is. <laughs> But there are times when realistically it's not, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then that kind of is when it comes down to how savvy is your marketer or you as a marketer to be able to create a conversation point out of what might be mid, you know what I'm saying? Like to be real with you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, Cause good marketing is gonna elevate a mid song, you know what I'm saying? Like good marketing is gonna take an amazing song and get it out of here, right? But either way it's gonna level up the situation mm-hmm. if you if you win it. So. I think it's just what it is, bro. Like you said, I, and I like that he framed it with big artists. I think big artists are the ones who get the leverage to be able to step outside of the music for the narrative a lot of the times. When you're a small artist and you're building your audience, nah, we a lot of times don't want to hear about none of the other shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, unless the music is 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 good, it's a tie show. Like the Eam Tripling situation, right? Like it's like narrative leads back to good music. You know, or at least, you know, good to okay music, depending on how you're looking at it. So we cool with here, right? Versus if that led back to some trash, would it have been as talked about? Right. As, so, it, as it was. And I'm glad you brought his situation up because there's a nuance to the market you're marketing as well, right? This is blatant marketing of clear marketing, right? Mm-hmm. It's a billboard, which we know is marketing, something you do for that type of effort. Or you could have a flyer for your concert and it's super dope or whatever. Or you covered up a whole um, establishment, you know what I mean? And you market that. But people know that that's marketing. Mm. You look at the EM Triplin situation. That too was marketing. They contrived some events and then they marketed that, mm. right? But that itself was marketing in, in beyond the music. So that it's a top-down um analogy where you have the very clear but it, there's nuances in between where look just market yourself doing stuff yeah. <laughs> that's what it comes down to of course it, it like you know why and what you're doing matters but just market yourself doing stuff other than the music yeah but that's a good point too because now if we even if we take it outside of and you already kind of touched on it but if we take it outside of just fan perspective and we go back to industry your peers people mm-hmm. you're networking with but they want to see proof that you out here doing things and taking things as, as seriously as, as you, mm-hmm. you want them to believe you are. And I mean, one of the most well-respected things across the music industry in every circle is how the marketing is executed, bro. Everybody in every yeah, genre, yeah. At every entity, everywhere respects a good marketing plan that put that was put together and Hell worked out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, and so it, it, a lot of times your marketing can be the way that you convince these people that you feel like a power player that you want in your corner to take you seriously. Because yeah. you know, like that's the part, everybody knows that marketing, is one of the hardest parts of building the artist up, I would say. Like, it's, it's easily top three, one of the most expensive parts. Um, it could be argued top five, the top ten is one of the harder things to do. You know what I'm saying? Depending on who you are. If you us, you know what I'm saying? If you everybody else, I can get why you might rank it where you rank it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's like everyone in the industry respects a great, well-executed marketing campaign. Everyone from the A&R at mm-hmm. the label to the to the, the goddamn show promoter, you know what I'm saying, at the, mm-hmm. the concerts you're pulling up to. Hey, we nerd out on that shit, man. Yeah, exactly, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, like, they love it. So it's like, here's your way to show your fans, hey, I make real-world moves, right? Or things in real life happen around me. Because that's essentially what you're doing about marketing and marketing. Showing them, like, hey, things happen around me in real life. So way for you to show your industry peers, like, hey, I am making things happen around me in real life, whether organically or, or you know, through me executing some elaborate marketing plan I put together. Mm-hmm. Either way, it's win-win, bro. I'm showing my fans that I do shit in real life, which, like you said, fans love it when they feel like their internet 
person is making moves in, in the real world. Like, we all love that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then people in the industry love to see that your internet celebrityism is translating into some real world shit. Hey, this looks like a safe investment. It's going to be equal equate to more than just streams and views. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, marketing your marketing is a win win across the board. And, yeah. and like I say, it puts more respect on the name of the marketer, bro. You know? Way more. Hey. You know, people got to respect our paintbrush. You know what I'm saying? Our pen, <laughs> you know? And I start running down these KPIs and these target results, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's magic happening. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. See, that's, that's, that's <laughs> the thing. People don't care about the numbers like that. People yeah. want the numbers, but people don't care about the, the technical aspect of the marketing. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't care about the science of it. They care about the art or they appreciate the art. It's hard for them to truly appreciate the, mm -hmm. the science of it. But of course, that's what I've always loved about marketing, that it is art and science. And the best ones can be creative, be artful, but it impacts the science, right? It moves mm -hmm. the numbers. It's not just, oh, you're doing some cool creative looking shit, but it doesn't impact anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what people get lost. You, they're either over there or they're your super number focused and you're moving a needle, but you can't get those exponential results from just doing the technical shit either. You're just kicking the ball down the field. It's like you're watching football and they keep doing the short passes. You could get there eventually, but it's never going to be that sexy, entertaining thing that people are playing the highlights. And it goes, you know, through the roof, shared on every channel. People are talking about it. So when you want to go big, you're still going to need the long ball and Randy Moss to catch that bitch with one hand over three niggas. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. You need to have some art, something that's beautiful, cool, that can be worth having a conversation about. But that's that balance. And I feel like most people not only struggle with it, most people don't know that that's what they're struggling with when it comes to marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you just said it too. Like, I think it's just the language barrier, right? Yeah. Like they don't know how to communicate that and yeah. things outside the numbers. So like an artist might be saying, hey, I want 10 million views on my video. Right. But what they're really saying is I want an impactful moment that seems larger than life, right? 10 million views is just the way they know how to, to quantify or express yeah. it through what the way they understand it comes from digital marketing. Hey, I, the last artist I saw get 10 million views, he had a larger than moment life. So that's what yeah. I want, 10 million views, right? It's like, mm, you really want the moment. That moment could come before that that, that point, right? Yes. Um, or there might be a lot more that needs to be done to make you have the potential to get that type of moment. But yeah, I think it's just a language barrier. You know what I'm saying? We got people who who speak the language of marketer, marketers and marketing like very loosely. Cause what, what do you see in the internet? You see numbers being talked about, KPIs, cost per clicks, cost per whatever. Like that's what gets talked about in, in, in tandem with marketing a lot of the time. Yep. Um, or you see like these bigger, larger and life marketing moments that are very inaccessible to you. And so you think that either marketing is either all clicks and likes or it's all these big larger than life moments that happen mm -hmm. all the time it's like there is a middle ground between both of those you know what i'm saying and you know <laughs> why marketing is so disrespected right because everybody feel like they can do it bro it's a course out there exactly. course around every corner bro everybody feels like they can do it because it's one of those few fields that people can do it by mistake and reap the benefits yeah and because they reap the benefits they think they're good yeah but you have, you can't keep repeating it because you don't know why mm -hmm. you can't break it down so sometimes you know, you can explain what someone did and they be like, well, no, I wasn't thinking about all that. That's cool that you weren't thinking about all that. That's it just happened for you. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That might even be why it worked because you were able to do it so authentically yeah. <laughs> and you'd have to worry about acting it out. But that doesn't mean that it didn't work because of the principles that are true. Then you 
apply that across the board, all right, for an actual marketer and a true marketing strategist, you're able to do it again and again, apply it to these multiple situations in a way that feels authentic. That's what marketing really is, mm. all right? But yeah, again, so many people blow up, go viral, all these different things without even understanding why. And they think they're a marketer. They think they know better. They they do it on one platform. They don't understand that you learn how to hack a platform, which means you might have some marketing talent in you. But that doesn't mean you know how to apply it to multiple platforms. If the landscape completely changes, you can figure it out real yeah. quick. That's what like that's what a true like marketer will 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 be able to make happen. So look. I know artists y'all feel disrespected, but you know we feel for you in our own ways. Yeah, because we 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 feel disrespected multiple times over. Yeah, one more person tell me they know how to market because I can set up a Facebook ad, bro. I'm gonna lose it. Lose my <laughs> shit. Hey, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But did you just square up? Did you put your fit? <laughs> hey, put it there. Put them there. Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> hey. Jacory got them paws for y'all, dog. He got them paws for y'all. Oh, thanks, bro. Oh, uh, let's uh, be, like they got some more added. He added another example, so let's put this back up. Metro booming. Um, see, I was, I feel weird for saying the G and booming because <laughs> I was thinking about something else. Example two, I was trying to stop myself. Example two. <laughs> uh, Metro booming's project, heroes and villains, had more of a market the concept approach. The concept of the album was that of a sequel to his Not All Heroes Wear Capes from 2018. The idea is that all of the features and producers on the project fall into the category of either a hero or villain. Mm -hmm. This created a conversation about the album separate of the music, which resulted in tons of free marketing as well. All right, next slide. Some features that I think, uh, okay. He's showing a slide example of someone. I think it said, let's see what it's supposed to say. Some features that I think we can see on Metro Boomin's new Heroes and Villains. All right. He's just talking about some of the conversation that came from Metro Boomin's post. All right. And that. So if you think you took any value from this, shout out to Josh um, and One Track. Go ahead and follow him. If y'all got value from that post or find him, you know what I mean? Now, going back to Metro Boomin's uh, project. That was something that was very clear. I mean, we kind of talked about it, right? It's a project that was more about the experience, right? The production mm -hmm. of itself as almost a mini movie is not a project that's built on singles that are supposed to go crazy. Yeah, like he built the album soundtrack to his own movie. Yes, yeah. he built the soundtrack to his own movie, Yeah, right? And there were some moments that, I, like I said, I wish, like the weekend track, I feel like, could have really been something if they really leaned into it. It should have been an all weekend type of track. If I was trying to make a hit, I feel like that could be a weekend hit. And I don't think it needed a rapper on this song as much as I love 21. And that's the first song I ever felt like. And I could have went without 21 on that in terms of like a feature collab. What was another song off of that project that could have been a hit single if maybe it wasn't in the scope of that project that didn't that wasn't seeking for hit singles in that way? Mm. I have to look at a track list. That's a that's a yeah. that's a deep question. <laughs> that's a deep question. <laughs> yeah, that's All a right. deep question. Like, could have been a hit without the if it wasn't in the context of the rest of it, right? Because it, you know, and it was intentional about being a hit, right? Yeah. Not even just the context of it, but just because of the context, they didn't seek to make it a hit. So they added production, you know, all these production things that took away from that. It's a different approach. Like, oh no, we're building this for a soundtrack. We're we're gonna add a second feature. A separate feature here or we're going to change the production up here to mimic a change of scenery or mood versus we're just trying to produce an earworm worm and see this thing playing on the radio so people are bumping it in the clubs or their, or their cars it wasn't about that that's all uh, i'm saying yeah, let, me, let me whip out my old spotify real quick all right because i mean i'm my first instinct is on time the intro song that one, I don't know if I could have seen that one being a hit. That one was one of my favorite ones. No, the so. second half of it, bro, without the... Oh. Yeah. See, Never mind the first half. Yeah, the second half of see, it. See, you're proving my point. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? There were like points of the song. If you think about, and this is what producers do today all the time, right? Once sampling became a thing, right? They would literally take these old ass songs, 
right? And just take that one part that could have been a hit and then make a hit out of that one bit of the song. Like if you listen to, uh, you know, Shawty Lowe, what's the official name of that song? They Know. They Know. There we go. Yeah. If you listen to Shawty Lowe, They Know and find the song that it was made from, it's one of Mandrill songs, right? And that's like an old group. Literally, that song sounds nothing like that except for that five seconds of the song. Mm. And they literally took that five seconds of the song and just played it the whole song. Yeah. The rest of it is so detached. If you think about like how different the beginning of that uh, song that you're referencing of Metro Boomin's mm. sounds in the second one. I mean, you're talking about hearing flutes, church bells. Yeah. It's stupid different, bro. Yeah. So I think what you're talking about right here like yeah if y'all just lean into that second half of the song it, it could have been a hit but yep. it, that was uh which was it called again uh on time, on time. Legend. but i get it though bro because like th- yeah. that, that intro song is probably one of the best intro songs in a long time especially when you talk about the narrative aspect but i told oh, you I like my my interpretation of it you yeah know what I'm saying? and and just kind of what i was getting from it where it's yep. like yo this first half sounds like the superhero Showing up to save the day, like oh shit, about to be good. We okay, like Superman showed up, mm-hmm. and then you have the 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 beat drop, and that to me sounds like the part of the show where it's like you know the superhero goes and punches the villain, and they realize it doesn't hurt, and then it's like <laughs> oh shit, like this nigga about to fuck us up. Like no, the day is not saved. We actually just realized it got much worse because the person that came to save us can't do anything. You know what I'm saying? That's what that to me is what that transition from John Legend mm-hmm. to that future shit sounded like. And I was like, yo, this shit is beautiful. This shit is crazy, <laughs> bro. Like he just walked me there. So I get it. I get why they had to do it that way. See, that right there goes back to the importance of marketing your marketing, mm-hmm. making sure the concept is clear and clean. Mm-hmm. Because now you went into it with that type of ear and perspective. Yeah, looking for that. And yeah. you have these visuals yeah. going through your head throughout the project. Yeah, that's true. It's that, a beautiful thing, The man. movie definitely set it up for it, but it's like, if, if any of you haven't seen the short movie he dropped with it, it, it does beautifully set it up. I would tear up if I was <laughs> a part of that project yeah. and you gave that description right there. <laughs> he, he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, like that, that, that's a beautiful moment right there, bro. Yeah, you, bro. you just brought that shit all together, bro. It's like it, it's nothing like <laughs> making something creative, and then people get it. Yeah, that's true, bro. And from song one, like it didn't take me five, six songs to get into it. Like song one, I was like, oh no, nah, I'm I'm right where he wants me to be at, bro. Beautiful. I'm here, bro. I'm here for the heroes hey, in the village. Hey, talk about marketing and marketing. Remember when I said. Back to the two James. You market your shit. People respect your eye and the way you approach things. And yeah. now they'll hire you for other stuff. If I'm a movie supervisor, music supervisor, hey, man, this dude can do all my soundtracks. And I know it's a soundtrack check out there. Yeah. So he might not be marketing <laughs> to the charts in that bag. But, hey, this is a catalog, right? Yeah. I, I always say artist. Well, I always say since the last three weeks, artist, your career is your catalog. And he just put out a catalog that shows that he can very well be a music supervisor or he can produce the soundtrack, right, for a scary movie, a superhero movie, and any other category that applies. Yeah, facts. Facts. This shit is beautiful right here. This shit is beautiful. Um, Now let's switch to a whole nother direction. 